Okay, um, in our series of coastal processes, we are here. Um, so here we're going to cover the last lesson. So this will be the last lesson on coastal processes. So quickly, here we're going to be looking at coastal hazards and management. So I say coastal hazard opportunities and management. So what are the coastal opportunities? This is like when you say advantages of the coast now one is tourism obviously i don't need to explain that you can read um two is sport so many sport uh, uses the coast like sailing surfing diving fishing is an opportunity uh, provide food oil and gas so reserves are found usually under the ocean near coast housing so many people live along the coast because of its beauty and relaxing lifestyle Around the coast, you can see sandstones, which are used for building. Industries also. So many industries located near coast for easy trade. Then transport. Transport. Many ports are found in coastal areas and help trading and also aid traveling between countries. Okay. So what are coastal hazards? Um, so these are some coastal hazards. And one can be sea level rise. Uh, caused by global warming. So once there is sea level rise, you find out that the low-lying countries become vulnerable to flooding. Another coastal hazard is pollution. So sewage discharge, oil spillage, litters thrown into the sea can harm coastal ecosystem and the environment. It's a coastal hazard. Overfishing. So many fish stock found around the world have been overfished to dangerous levels. They can become extinct. Then we have things like coastal erosion. So many coastlines are being eroded by stronger storms and rising sea level. Then another one here, a coastal hazard is tropical storms. Uh, so frequency of storms and magnitude increase increases, causing flood, storm surges, and um, wind can also damage lives and properties. And people get affected also in the process. So coastal management. Uh, there are two ways in which you manage the coast. We have the hard engineering and we have the soft engineering. And these methods, are when hard engineering, are majorly the groins, the rock armors, the sea walls, the gabions, uh, revetment. But however, beach nourishment is soft engineering method. So we're going to look at these in individual methods and how it helps to manage the coastline. So first, hard engineering. Um, coastal management. This involves, hard engineering involves building. It involves building artificial structures which try to control natural processes. Building artificial structures that help to control natural processes are uh, hard engineering. So first we look at sea walls. So as you can see this is a sea wall here. So it's, it's made up of concrete stones, concrete stone wall uh, which is built to cover the cliff in front of a coast so you see this is a cliff here and this is the base so around the base of a cliff you build a sea wall and the function here the sea wall will help to strengthen the cliff and deflect the wave back into the sea so if the the incoming wave hits this place instead of hitting the cliff it hits the sea wall so it now deflects it back the wave energy will be deflected back into the sea without harming the 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 cliff so uh deflect back into the sea because it is what it, it is curved then next we have the groins now take note try to understand the difference between them because images sometimes will be given to you in the exam and you need to use the image to now identify which type and describe what it does now so groins are wooden extension from beach and uh, downward into the sea so this is made up of wood so it's built into the sea so it's an extension so wooden extension from the beach downwards into the sea at right angles now so grounds help to prevent uh longshore drift so it helped to prevent longshore drift uh thereby it will trap materials so if you look at this you find out that here is there are more deposition of materials here than here that means at right angle as this longshore drift brings the material it cannot transport the material from this point to this point because the grounds will now act like an embankment. So it will now stop the movement of materials, thereby helping to prevent 
um, coastal uh, erosion and, or, of material so it helps to build up the beach so it will not remove beach materials so that's a management process next is revetment um, I like to tell, see revetment like a wooden <laughs> seawall so it's not a wall made from concrete uh, this is a wood structure now so it's wooden slate um, at an angle at the base of a cliff so it's at the base of a cliff just like sea walls but in this case it is made up of wood so you can see it here at the base of a cliff now uh, the function is that revetment causes wave to break and stop wave uh, breaking on the beach so the wave cannot hit the the, the cliff uh, but however it will break on the revetment so erosion of revetment rather than cliff so the revetment which is made up of wood is eroded uh, not the cliff so the wood there is meant to protect the cliff and prevent further erosion of the cliff so next is gabions uh, gabions are cage or boxes containing rocks uh, concrete sand at base of cliff so these are like when you have cage and there are rocks inside the cage built at the base of a cliff now what it does is that it absorbs the wave energy so once the wave hit the base or, or is trying to hit the base of a cliff the wave energy is being absorbed by uh, uh, the gabions which are the rocks that are found inside the cage now and that as a result we help to stabilize the cliff and prevent it from further erosion Next, we have breakwater, which is also a hard engineering process. So you can see it looks like um, a, a spit that is formed, <laughs> that is built by humans um, with, with rocks to help prevent longshore drift. That's it. Now, so these are large concrete. So these are large concrete uh, um, blocks and boulders located offshore to change the direction of waves and reduce longshore drift. They also help absorb wave energy, obviously. Then here we have rock armor. Now, this rock armor are usually at the base of seawalls. So rock armor or riprap are big, heavy granite rock placed at the base of cliff, coast in front of seawalls. So you can see it here. Even at this point, these are rock armors here. So these are rock armors. So what they do is they help to provide protection against serious erosion by absorbing wave energy and they prevent erosion at, of coastal features such as beaches and also cliffs. Now, soft engineering. So soft engineering does not involve building artificial structure, but takes a more sustainable and natural approach to managing coast. So beach, this include beach nourishment where you are putting sand, pebbles, rock on the beach, uh, adding artificial sand at interval to the beach. So you add, you pick sand from somewhere, you come and nourish the beach with it. So you allow it to erode over time. You come and add more sand to it. It's simple. That's beach nourishment. You nourish the beach with sand. Now you manage retreat. So manage retreat uh, uh, or coastal realignment. It has to do with, this is when the area of the coast is allowed to erode like, like you see in this diagram they don't prevent it they just allow it to erode this is usually areas where the land there is of low value so why are you why are you spending so much to protect it when the land is of low value so you just leave it to erode so it's, it's more sustainable now next is dune regeneration remember when we looked at the formation of coast uh, when we look at the formation of sand dunes uh, we said it's when the, the beach blows wind from the the, the the coast, blows up materials, and once there's an obstacles like plant, it prevents the materials from moving forward or the sand, so they get deposited to form a dune. Now, what we do, what they do here, in order to stabilize the beach, they tend to plant vegetation. So, planting of mangrove vegetation on slopes such as Marian grass. So, what it does is, as you plant more vegetation, it will help to strengthen the dunes you get it and prevent coastal retreat so as is there more sand cannot be eroded it helps to hold them behind and also strengthen the dunes then lastly here we have the beach reprofiling so beach reprofiling involves redistributing sediment from the lower part of the beach to the upper part of the beach as you can see what they are doing here then 
Now, other methods. Now, you see, if you're writing IGCSE exams and they don't ask you, to, they didn't give you specific ones they want you to explain, usually sometimes they'll give you, okay, talk about the seawall or the revetment or a gabions or a ground. If they don't do that, what they do is they just ask you, describe how to manage a coast. You can add things like this other method, um, provision of cyclone shelters, you education, emergency evacuation procedures, you write that if they just ask you to describe management of a course that is that will also give you your answer however if they give you specific method to describe we'll describe them above so thank you and we've come to the last part see you the last thing we're going to do about this topic will be the case study aspect and possibly coursework